Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are here in the Cherokee Batting Range Podcast Studio getting ready to record episode number 252. We've got a fun topic for you today about the importance of grades and whether that's something that coaches should be paying attention to at all levels or if it's just a school ball thing only. Before we get into that, though, let's talk about becoming a patron. We would love for you to become a patron. If you can afford to support the podcast, if you see value in what we're doing, we want you to come on board. Go to patreon.com slash everythingfastpitch. It's $5, 10 or $20 a month. We've got a great group of patrons that have been very hardcore supporters of what we've been doing for a long time. We would love to see a few more people come on board and help to support us. We definitely love doing the podcast. We want to continue to do it moving into the future. And the biggest uh, support that we get is from our patrons. So if you're in a position where you can help us, go to patreon.com slash everythingfastpitch. Also want to throw in a quick plug. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, uh, we've got some gaps in the sponsorships that are available right now. Please reach out to us at everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. Either email address will work, and we'll talk about the idea of you coming on board as a sponsor. So, Don, here's the question. Stan asked me earlier today what importance is and how much importance coaches should be placing on academics in their athletic pursuits, and not so much the school ball level because we know At the college level, at the high school level, you have to have certain grades to be eligible. You have to have certain grades to be able to play. You know, different things like that are are always in play. If you want to get recruited, you have to meet certain standards, you know, to you know potentially get recruited to play in college. But thinking about it from a travel ball slash rec ball perspective, is would it be a good idea and is it within a coach's purview to hold players accountable for what they're doing in the classroom, to have some sort of standards, some sort of rules that if you don't maintain a certain grade point average, if you don't maintain a certain attendance level, if you, you have a certain number of detentions or demerits or anything like that that you know, potentially could harm your academic performance, is it okay in that realm to also be paying attention to and setting that kind of standard? And so you know, I just thought it was an interesting thought because I don't know for sure how many travel ball coaches really feel confident or comfortable that it is part of their obligation. I know there are some that do and, and really do have very fire and brimstone rules about if you don't have a certain grade point average, you got to sit out a week or whatever it is. But I was just kind of curious what you thought about that whole idea. Tori, I really like that idea. I really like the concept of the coaches and the parents working in conjunction with one another for that to be a topic that's brought up you know, in the recruiting process and, and bringing people on board is that that's something that we're going to work together on. I've had a ton of parents that, you know, will hold softball as kind of one of those things that's taken away if their right. if their grades drop, no more lessons with Coach Dawn, um, you know, until we get to the certain point, you know, and the look in their eye, you know, when they have that heart to heart chat, kind of devastating for the kids. Right. It's because impactful. It's something, yeah, it makes a difference to them. And, uh, and I've had some kids that have, you know, taking a break for a month because their studies just aren't there. And instead of taking the, you know, 30 minutes to drive, hour to hit and 30 minutes back, there's two hours that we can put towards math. And right. I'm totally on board with all that. And I applaud the parents that, you know, that are able to institute that as part of their study routine. And and to have that as part of the team setting requirements, I think is good, but it has to be something that's coordinated between the parents and the and the coaches. And talked about and right. encouraged and there's a lot of study time that could be had you know at, at the ballpark on tournament weekends too because I've had a number of students that would come and tell me stories about you know this really talented player that would be underneath a tree reading in between games and uh, you know doing their studies and things like that it's more fun to go goof off with the team and your buddies but if you've got obligations to do a good job in your in the classroom too I think that's uh an important time that right. that could be utilized. So I'm all on board on that, Tori, and I probably think that we probably don't do enough of it maybe, but here I'm going to throw this other piece in there too. Most of the kids that I'm around and that we train here are super, super diligent about their studies. They're almost over picky about their grades right. and to the point that it pours over into their training. And if they're used to getting you know, 95 or 100 on all of their tests, They expect to have a batting average of 950, 950, right? It almost pours over in the, in the wrong way for us to try and sell on them that, you know, not hitting 950 is okay. Right. But yeah, I think that for many of those kids that are kind of a little bit more into the athletics than into the studies that, uh, this would be a nice thing to to institute. Right. Well, and I think it's just one more selling point. You know, one of the things that I've 
thought was really helpful for us when I was coaching at Tennessee Tech was that we did emphasize academics so strongly. And because we emphasized it so strongly, I think we had players that chose to come play for us specifically because their academics were really important to them. So they wanted to be in an environment where they could be in engineering, they could be in medicine, they could be in nursing, and we were going to work with them and we're going to hold them to a high standard and expect a lot. You know, we had a a good stretch there for a couple of years. We were like a top 10 academic program and things like that, which was something I was super proud of. You guys had many accolades, I remember. And and it was, you know, a, a really cool thing. And then once that started to gain momentum, players wanted to, you know, to be part of, you know, raising the grade point average instead of hurting it. And so it became like a, an internal thing where the team was really paying attention to it too. But I think in the travel ball world, it's something that we can use again as a way to help our players and, and encourage our players, is a good word, to invest as much energy in that side of their lives as, as they do in other things. And I think that you know, as we get older and, and more and more things come into these young players' lives, they've got so many distractions and so many things that pull them away from paying attention to good grades, that anything we can do that's just one more you know, layer on the cake to encourage them to do it. And I think it can be a really powerful thing, as you said, to have a parent say, well, if, you're, you know, if you don't keep your grades up, you're not going to get to hit with Coach Don. You're going to have to sit out a week in, of travel ball. You're not going to be able to play whatever it is. And, and I think for coaches to start instilling that kind of a mindset, I think would be a really good thing. You know, my favorite softball movie ever I've talked about before, it's, it's still on Prime. So if you haven't seen All Stars yet, you have to watch All Stars on uh, Amazon Prime. And there's one scene in there where one of the parents is being interviewed and they're talking about how they want their daughter to have a good experience and be well-rounded and, you know, get good grades. If, you know, if she wants to read or whatever that, you know, that that's really important too. And then one of the other dads who's what kind of the hard O softball is the only thing dads walk by, well, reading ain't going to get her a scholarship. <laughs> so, you know, just that, unfortunately, I think that we do still have some people that are kind of thinking about, well, if she hits 700, you know, she can have a C minus average and somehow everybody's going to look at that and say, it's okay. So no, there might be some places that that's true, but it's going to certainly limit your options. And so coaches, I would encourage you, you know, again, in, in conjunction with your parents, make it something that's not a surprise. It's not a shock. We're not going to drop it in later on. And we talked in the everything fast pitch podcast this week about delivering on what you're promising. So offer that as one more reason why kids should want to be on your team. Hey, we are a highly motivated academic team. We hold our players to a really high standard, and we're, you know, there's going to be consequences if we don't meet them. You know, we're confident that you can. We're you know, going to do whatever we can to support your performance in the classroom and just do everything we can to keep driving home the point of how valuable and important that is because, again, I think kids just need as much guidance as we can give them and as many reasons to focus in on what's truly important instead of, you know, making one more TikTok video, let's make sure that they spend that time you know, doing their homework or you know, working on getting ahead in school or you know, actually reading a book just because reading a book could be fun once in a while. And Tori, this is a little bit off topic too, but that's uh, another benefit of having a little bit bigger roster is that we do have the benefit of being able to say, hey, Susie, you're not going to be able to play this particular weekend and it not be devastating for the rest of the team. Right. So a bigger roster gang. We'll yeah, talk about well, that another day. Yeah, maybe. But, but the other thing is if the whole rest of the roster figures out that we just had to drop out of a tournament because two of our kids got F's on tests this week. They would be, not be the one. May, maybe they're going to make up their mind to not be the one that makes us have to drop out of a tournament again someday. And there you go. And Stan raises a good point. So, and, and even if you're the coach that doesn't want to instill some sort of academic standards on your team, you have to always be the coach it supports the parents when the parents have to discipline their child because of academic malfeasance. Be ready to make accommodations right? so, to support it. Right, yeah. so that when a parent calls you and says, hey, Sally can't play this weekend. She got an F on her biology test, and she knows you know, that uh, you know, she's got to maintain whatever grade point average to keep playing, so she's not playing this weekend. You have to be the, hey, I really support that. I think that's a great thing. You know, that'll get her attention, and I support it 100%. If you're the coach, like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're doing this to my team. You know, I can't find somebody to replace her on such short notice. Well, then you're part of the problem, not part of the solution. And, Tori, as we're saying that, too, it might be important as a parent, if that is important to you or that's something that you're going to do, that should be spoken of when you're accepting the offer to be a part of that team. Right. So that it's not like a shock or the other way. Right. And, and I think that the whole idea of, 
all of us getting on board and making sure that we're emphasizing this. And, it's the and right stuff. It's, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a whole lot more important than winning another plastic ring because you won the you know ABCDE tournament in whatever town this weekend. It's the right stuff. It's the right thing to be doing. So that's going to wrap up number 252. Please make sure that you check out the fastpitchprep.com website. You can order your square cuts training discs there. You also have access to the YouTube channel and the blog posts. Make sure you reach out to us at everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com with questions, comments, ideas, suggestions for topics, and make sure that you consider becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com slash everythingfastpitch. We would love to have you come on board if you see value in what we're doing. So for Coach Don McKinley and our producer, Stan Lewis, this is Coach Tory. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.